the difference between the Great Commission and our individual calling. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what the Great Commission is and um, what calling is by by definition in a biblical sense? Okay. So, um, Great Commission, I would define in two ways. There is the nominal understanding on the Great Commission. You can find that uh, in Matthew 28. Um, go, go ye and all to the world, make disciples of me, baptizing them uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is always the, is usually the scripture that is used to, and is said to be the Great Commission. So that's one way to define the Great Commission. The alternative way to define the Great Commission would be when you start um, having uh, accounting for, budgeting for the fact that there is a universal purpose that God has assigned. It's a universal aim. It's a universal design a program that he has. And then he has mandated each and every one of us to be part of it. And we are part of it as a collective, but we are part of it as well with specific individual um, assignments. And you could further extrapolate that to say that is what we call the calling. Uh, you could, you know, get a derivative from there. But what I would like to say also on this topic is you could say the Great Commission and then the Greater Commission. If you were going to try to marry those two, uh, those two definitions, so what does that mean by that? Not to confuse, uh, not to sound, not to you know, throw everyone into confusion, but uh, simply the greater commission, as like some would define it, is what you find in Genesis chapter one, which is uh, you know God said to Adam, essentially charging us. Uh, be, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish, fill the earth, uh, and, and and every other command he gave there. And you would have that the Great Commission would now be the one that was said, you go ye unto the wall and make disciples of me. The reason why it's maybe tagged as a greater commission versus great commission is that when you when you look at Matthew 28, it's part of the if you really think about it, it's part of the Genesis chapter one charge. When you're making disciples of Christ, you're making multiples, which is again, part of the commission to multiply and fill the earth. So you could always draw those, uh, those parallels. And so there's a th yet a third group that would say, yeah, they're one on the same thing. It's just a different way to interpret or specific applications to uh, a charge to go into all the world. So this was this are some of the uh, ways to look at uh, what you call the Great Commission. It just depends on who is who you are asking. And uh, so in the the, the the general discourse uh, in the you know people that are concerned about the things of God. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say Christian. Them. I want to be very careful um, throwing those words. But for all intents and purposes, for people that are in the Christian now, when they're having that scholarly conversation, you would tend to find uh, the definitions thrown out in these three ways. Just to um, yeah. just to uh, um, come in a bit mm -hmm. for clarification purposes. Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, so you're saying that there is a great commission, then there's the greater commission. And the Greater Commission is something that we can find in Genesis mm -hmm. when God blessed man mm -hmm. and the blessing was pronounced as be uh, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, um, fill the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now we have in Matthew chapter 28, the Great mm -hmm. Commission. For me, I'm looking at it this way that the Great Commission applies to believers. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a responsibility for us believers it does not apply mm -hmm. to unbelievers mm -hmm. whereas i see the um the greater commission applies mm -hmm. to all humanity that's and a the very great commission yeah. specifically applies to the disciples of yeah. jesus those who have given their life to jesus right. they are mandated according to matthew chapter 28 verse 
16 to 20, that mm-hmm. go therefore and make disciples of all nations, right. baptize. Okay, the, the mandate is given to believers, the disciples okay. of Jesus, but right. they are meant for who? For humanity. For humanity. The commandment in Genesis applies to humanity mm-hmm. everywhere, every time. It right. applies to everybody. Right, 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 and 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 it does not discriminate. You see, the the, the charge in Matthew chapter twenty eight um, is specific to those disciples. It's because you are called, like later on, uh, Paul also says, we are called, we are given the ministry of reconciliation, so that this called out folk will return and restore everybody back to what was the original design in Genesis chapter one. And so, yes, you could look at it as. Uh, you could look at it as uh, one is the greater commission than the other, but it's just, it, it, I mean, we, we can boil it all down to semantics, uh, but it's, it doesn't change the fact that the Genesis, uh, sorry, the uh, Matthew 28 charge is essentially to reconcile everybody back to the general Genesis chapter one state and the Genesis chapter one design. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it's like I said, it's still a valid way to look at it. But. I think that in order for us to uh, perfectly fulfill the charge mm. of God in Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-eight, right? Uh, Matthew chapter 28, twenty-eight, verse sixteen yeah. to twenty, yeah, has to be done first in order for us to be able to uh, fulfill the other commission in Genesis. Mm-hmm. What, what what am I saying? Mm. Um, the goal of Matthew chapter twenty eight twenty eight is, yeah. is for believers to go out there and bring mm-hmm. unbelievers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then, because the initial mandate in Genesis chapter one verse twenty eight applies mm-hmm. to all humanity, all humanity, yes, right? It's a grand design. So yeah. so now that Main we design, have yeah. seen the light, now mm-hmm. that we have be reconciled back to our creator mm-hmm. now our goal is to bring the other fold right and then when we bring them to mm-hmm. the fold mm-hmm. and then that charge that commandment that instruction in genesis chapter 1 to 28 mm-hmm. can be fulfilled mm-hmm. to its maximum capacity mm-hmm. right so okay. because you mentioned that when jesus was speaking because somebody i read an article how the charge of the Great Commission was applied to the disciples to witness right. to the Jewish community, not right. much of the Gentile, right? Okay. And then when Paul came, Paul had a specific calling mm-hmm. for the Gentiles, whereas mm-hmm. Peter, his calling was reconciliation to the, Jewish. To the Jew, mm-hmm. right? And okay. Paul, his calling was to the Gentiles, right? Okay. So I think that Christ was, Jesus had a plan for both the Jew and the Gentile. Yeah. That to go back to the original plan, which applies to all humanity, both Jew and Gentile. And Gentile, yeah. So I think there's a, we just have to harmonize the the commission in Matthew. Yes. And also harmonize it with the commission in Genesis. Yeah. So that's, that, that's so the, the reason why, the reason why, yeah, just to pick up on what you said, the reason why um, I like the fact that people are, talking about uh commission the genesis chapter 128 in terms of the commission is the fact that it is of a truth that you can't really appreciate what you cannot really fully say you appreciate uh the ministry of christ uh, of yeshua uh you cannot really separate it from the fact that it was to reconcile man back to god back to the pre-fall state right um, now, so again, to pick up on what you said, um, I, I want to be I want to be a little careful here because if if you said that if the, the whatever the article said that um, the disciples were told to just speak to the Jewish Jewish people, uh, that's that might be true in a way, but like you said, I mean, they, I mean what they, I meant yeah. is that that was their target location, their reachable location. Right? That was the reachable, yeah, but of course. The intent of, course. of Jesus was to go to reach to, to the, all yeah, the exactly, world, right? Exactly, so, exactly. So, so that's, that's the thing because if you if you see it, all he nations, says first yeah. in he says yeah he says first in uh, in Judea, then in Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth, right? Yes. When we are reconciled, we are going to go back to what was ordained 
mm. from Genesis chapter 1. We have been doing some part of Genesis chapter 128 in some fashion. I mean, uh, feel the earth multiply. I mean, it's like from two people, we have what, 7 billion and counting right now. So there's already the, an implicit mandate that believers are, are sons of God. I, I really want to be very, I want to be very intentional in using the word sons of God. Uh, sons of God are in charge of taking care of creation itself. And so void of all the political noise, wherever side anyone stays, stands on, there is an implicit command that we are to take care of creation. It's a replenishment part of things. There is, even if we are subduing creation, but there is replenishment. There is, you know, there's, there's tilling the soil, but then there's replenishment. So whatever side of the, of the argument, um, you would, you just find that Satan tends to mar a lot of the ideas that God sends out. It's very interesting. Uh, so there is a right idea of stewardship, but then uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's twisted and bent in, in many ways by, you know, by the enemy and by it's all, you know, all the minions. And so you end up having all these different debates. But anyway, my point of branching into this part was that you get to see that this concept of this, this, this concept of a commission doesn't, doesn't just stop in, Hey, uh, let me knock a few doors, get a few of my neighbors or people in those <laughs> apartments to say the sinner's prayers and, you know, hopefully join this church and, <laughs> you know, become, you know, whatever. It goes beyond that. There's, there's a bigger thing. There's a bigger picture. That's what it, really what I want to stress out in this point here. Yeah. I see calling as our individual parts mm -hmm. to the whole. Yeah. The Great Commission is the whole. Mm -hmm. And the calling is our parts. And mm -hmm. every church has a role to play. Every believer has a role to play. Mm -hmm. Every ministry has a role to play, right? right. So our goal is to advance the kingdom work, right? Mm -hmm. That is why sometimes when churches don't want to work together, there's that sense of um, competition. Mm. There's that sense of, you know what, um, this is my church, that is your church. It's like we are not on the same page. But if mm -hmm. you are a kingdom-minded individual, mm. you see it as the work that this church is doing, mm. the work that that church is doing, or the ministry that this brother is doing, the ministry that I am doing, we, we all have one mandate. Yeah. We are all adding value to one mandate, which is the Great Commission mandate. Mm. All of us were working for one master. Yeah. We're working for one. I mean, one of, all of us should be working for one master. <laughs> I should say we should be working for one master. Uh, so one of, the thi one of the things I find that is very, has been very successful in the, the enemy Hasatan has been the uh, very strategic uh, division. It's been very strategic. It's been it's been very very calculated, very very well done. I would say, uh, where you would have these divisions in the you know in the body. Now, divisions in the body didn't just start today. Didn't just start uh, you know with uh, you know the split between. <laughs> the Lutheran church and the Catholic church. I mean, you remember uh, Paul was addressing an issue with people who say, hey, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. Yeah. Um, things of that sort. So I find that, I find that as time went by and people were not so intentional in, oh, I mean, lost sight of what was the original uh, 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 mandate, original assignment you tend to start creating camps start creating uh i mean we, we are social creatures by nature right and then we tend to identify with our tribes you know and so when people see a particular uh, interpret the scripture as a certain way then they join the camps i mean we i, we, I opened this with talking about how we had people different people believing in different kinds of uh interpretations of the commission right and then you find today that every five minutes that you find a church, it's been a difference between um, 
like a, an eye or <laughs> an eye or, 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 or a, a full stop or a comma in, in scripture, people interpret in the scripture, right? So, um, so I, I just find that that's been really, really successful campaign by the enemy to separate us. So the solution now is, remember again, Ephesians, um, we have been given the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists, for what? unification edification that will all come to the unity of the faith and elsewhere it's talking about the unity of the faith in the bond of peace and so but we can't come to that without having the same mindset and i believe that one of the strongest things is for us to understand that's why this conversation about the great commission is important but not just uh, not just these, uh, not just a, a mere understanding of it, but the root, the core of the understanding of it, which is what reconciliation, right? Restoring things back. So if we all have the idea that God is calling us to be to reconcile, reconcile, be reconciled to Him, but also to reconcile all everything to Him, then I think that's a that's a that's a foundation. So once we have disagreement in interpretation, then we can come to this, okay, what do we agree? on how can we reconcile what is the middle ground here this is already the spirit of reconciliation right and so but if we have people that are saying hey the whole point of christianity is so that you can go to heaven after you you know you live your life and then that's it then that's already a problem because we have other people saying hey um yeah just receiving miracles is the reason why you should be a christian and then obviously you have people uh, you know, believing in what we would find to be true, which is there is a greater agenda for, of God and he, all, he wants us back to him. He wants us back to him. This is, this is the truth. He wants us back to him. But we also have to come together ourselves. Universal call. Now, each and every one of us has a portion in this call. Some of us are called in a grand way where we are supposed to actually be, for example, political figures. Some of us are called to be media personnel in need. And some people are very good listeners. Now, the next point, we are all equipped with specific giftings that will contribute to fulfilling that mandate, that call, that portion of our that portion in the grand scheme of, scheme of things. And so let's, let's, let, let me now use one more analogy and then I'll just uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get your response to. You have, maybe you're building a house. You want to build a structure, a building, a house or whatever it is. You have people that lay the, the foundations. You have the electricians. You have people that actually know how to install the drywalls or in places where you don't use drywalls, use actual concrete. You have uh, structural engineers. You have the architects that actually designed in the first place, right? You have these different parts. And then when you, when you furnish the house, you're not, gonna call, you're not necessarily going to call the people that lay foundations with concrete. and You're not really going to call them. What are you going to call? You're going to call interior designers. And so we have all these things towards that. Point is, what portion, what part of this building are we supposed to be part of? What are we supposed to do? This is where you can now start saying, oh, this is called. Now, there's people that are specifically called to equip others to, you know, to respond to what they are supposed to do in this grand scheme. And here we go back to the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, the pastors. And so this is where they really come in. So, um, yeah, so I kind of really wanted to answer in a broad net because what I find is a lot of us tend to carry a specific idea and just run with that one idea because that's what we were told from our, <laughs> you know, from our denomination. Uh, but once we understand that, again, there is this one God, this one Lord, we are called to, I'm sorry, he's calling us, first of all, it's calling all of us. It's calling all of us. But there's different manifestations of that calling, right? Uh, so... And, and wow. with, those, with those callings, those manifestations of those callings, we are equipped with the skills or resources. Some things come natural, some things we have to learn. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's, that's a way I would encourage us to look at what is uh, a calling.
Thank you. So my takeaway from this is that um, I see Colin as your part in a specific way for the general um, mandates of God. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and you gave a wonderful illustration of a house, you mm. know, and um, and like the body of Christ. Right. I think it was Paul that talks about different parts. Yeah, exactly. Body, exactly. Right? Some exactly. people are the eye. Some people mm -hmm. are an ear. Some mm -hmm. people can be a foot. Some people can be a throat. Some people mm -hmm. can be a lip. Mm -hmm. Some people can be a nose. Some people mm -hmm. can be whatever. Whatever mm -hmm. that God has created you with, equipped you with the potential, the personality. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe that the Bible says that many are called, few are chosen. Right. That's sometimes, it's like many are called, but few mm -hmm. are chosen. Mm -hmm. I believe that those few who are chosen are those who have identified the voice that I've called them, mm -hmm. who have taken it seriously, mm -hmm. and who are engaged in doing it mm -hmm. according to the master's call, right? and who are faithful in right. fulfilling whatever they are called for, right? Because right. Jesus said on that day, it will, the, 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 the recognition on that day is that well done, faithful servant. Mm. Right? It didn't say mm. well done, perfect servant. Right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Faithful that's, that's, servant. Yeah. Right. Because faithfulness is not faithfulness is is you being consistent and persistent right. in doing something, right? Mm. You've been committed in what you have been entrusted into, right? It's right. like Jesus right. giving talents to different people. He gave mm. one to he gave one talent to the other one, five, and then ten. And mm. the five did whatever he could do mm. to maximize it. Mm. The mm. ten did whatever he could do to maximize the ten. And mm. then the mm. one didn't do anything, right? Mm. So mm. it's not really how much responsibility has been given to you by God. It's, mm. it's the little calling, like you said, a calling can be somebody you're called to sweep. Mm. You understand? What mm. God wants to see is your faithfulness in that Correct. thing that that he has been given you. Because the Bible said, if you're faithful in what is little, mm. and then he can be entrusted with much. But most with times, much, yeah, we, that's right. some of us, we see calling as something, oh, I've been called to save mankind. That's I've right. Been called is such a, a grand style. Mm. That's when we know that we have, we have been called. Mm. Sometimes we admire people like T.D. Jakes, top men of God in the world. Yes, mm. they are called, right? Mm. And when God called us to do something small, mm. we don't see that as a calling. Mm. Because why? Our calling is not like T D J. It's not on a grand stage, yeah. It's not a grand mm. stage. You know, we mm -hmm. don't have we don't have popularity. We don't have fame. Mm. It's like it's like I see men of God in the Bible. I call them the invisible leaders, mm. or the invisible servants of God. Mm. But they are visible to God, but mm. they are invisible. To humanity, to, they to are us, invisible yeah. to us, mm. but they are visible to God, mm. right? Our calling advances the commission. Right. It's like it's like it's like the eye that mm -hmm. is part of the body. Mm -hmm. The functions of the eye or the eyes are mm. for the entire body. Right. Right? Right. So the eye cannot say, you know what? I am doing this for myself with no impact on the body. Right. That is why. Sometimes people need to have, sometimes you have to let people, know, especially a, a, a pastor or somebody who's the head of the church, to let people know that the, the role that you are playing is significant. It is. It is. Just because it might not be that role. It's like if the eyes say, you know what, I am not going to give sight to the body anymore. Mm. Then the body's not going to have sight. There's mm. nothing you can do about it. Mm. Which I believe that our calling to in the sight of God gives every believer significance. Hmm. A sense of meaning that you matter. You matter in this, in this generic magnitude plan agenda of God. What can I do for God? I'm not the pastor. The hmm. only thing they do that I can, I can I'm somebody is when hmm. I become a man of God, hmm. when I become hmm. the lead role. Hmm. But you don't have to be, you don't have to take the lead role in a church for you to know that you're important to God, for you to know that you matter to God, for right. you to know that you have been called. I think right. that has to change in church that every right. man, that is why Miles Moreau said that every man is a leader in their mm. own area, the area of, of their gifting. gifting. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
Because I think he emphasized on that Genesis greater commission that you talked about, or which mm. I call, I don't call it greater commission. I call it the mm. first commission. Yeah. That's the language. I call it the first yeah. commission. Uh, and I yeah. call the Matthew commission the second commission. Mm. Both of them that's, are see, connected. See, so same mm. about, I was saying about the semantics, right? That's 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 very valid. That's a very valid way to, to, to call them. Yeah, go ahead, please. Because if, if you mm. use the word great and greater, you're greater, saying yeah. yeah. the Genesis commission is greater than then, yeah, you know, you know what I right. mean. But for right, me, exactly. I use I use a different language saying that right. the first commission, first, Genesis, yeah. and yeah. then the um, second commission. The second commission. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. And I also see it as the in order for you to achieve the first commission, you mm. have to do the second commission. The second commission is very important because it, when you do the second commission, then you can achieve the first commission. Correct. Correct. Because the set, the purpose of the second commission is to is to get everybody inclusive, is to mm -hmm. is, is to bring everybody on board. Which yeah. the first commission is for everybody, applies for everybody. And yeah. now the second commission, whereas the second commission, whereas selected few people based on faith in Jesus mm -hmm. to actually bring back everyone mm -hmm. into the fulfillment of the first commission, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. God said. Mm -hmm. uh, mankind be fruitful mm -hmm. multiply a mm -hmm. blessing to all mankind right yeah so the work the, that's what jesus christ said that the laborers are few but the harvest is plenty yeah so the universe is the harvest but the workers mm. are few mm. the laborers are few and those laborers are people who have been called and chosen mm -hmm. so so, so what what one that the, the is very powerful uh, one thing one thing um one thing I, I would even add to that is uh, it's it's almost so let's use the let's use the first and second commission language so one thing that you find is while the second commission is reinforcing or you know fulfilling in well once while while the second commission is is bringing people back to that first commission you find that second commission is also fulfilling the second the first commission because there is a multiplication multiplication effect, and this is this is going to tie back to the other thing I was going to say about uh, the some of the, the the strategic errors that the, the the opposer has introduced into the church, where you have this division between what you call the clergy and the laity, right? Uh, to, the, to the point where it discourages people's creativity, or in some sense, they are self. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase this. All right, I'll put this in air quotes. Uh, the sense of as of esteem, you know, where it's like you're using um, some uh, man of one, you know, some uh, popular uh, preacher, where people will see themselves less off in the activity in the plan of God, just because they're not on the platform. Uh, platform. So, you know, uh, yeah. uh, what's what's the name of that? Uh, uh, you know, is it TBN? You're not on TBN or on one of you know one of those other big platforms. So, so that yeah, it's it's very it's very it's very very poignant for you to say that. Yeah, the, the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, they are really uh, yeah this actual life manual because it's very true, right? So we we hear stories and stories upon where you have that you know little intern that had an idea. And you know, or that uh, you know floor worker that did something, uh, and then it really helped you know to save even the countries. You know, um, one thing I would say, one thing I would say, I, I, I want to mention this. Um, I, I was I forgot to mention this earlier. I, I was in a I, was, I forget it was a seminar or something of the sort, and then during the seminar, I think it was in a university, and then. Um, there was a question. The question was thrown: If the the cleaners, the janitorial staff, the custodians, if they were to go on strike, what happens to the school? Mm. And there were different answers. The answer, one answer was, "Hey, um, it's just going to be dirty. Things are going to be stinking." Or some 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 people gave different uh, other answers, but. The right answer was, well, according to the facilitator, the right answer, which I believe is true, was the school closes down. Mm. The school closes down. School sh the school shuts down. Now, how do we get from they are not doing, they are not cleaning, 
or they're on strike or whatever it is to the school closing now. First of all, if they're not doing their work, the entire place, as I said earlier, when the other answer came, it was going to be stinking. It's not going to be really a clean space for people to work, right? Mm. And then before you know it, you have, you know, it can result in different outbreaks of things. Um, so I'm just, uh, what, what I was really going to was something that people easily pass by. You see these people that clean up, you know, they have the vacuums or whatever. Then you just easily, they're, they're mops and then you easily bypass them. Say, hey, if, if you, you know, if, you, if you're courteous, you say, hey, how are you? And then you pass by. Uh, it's very important to know that if those guys are not working, then the whole, the whole organization has to close down because if things are not clean enough, then no one can work there. So except you would want to pick it up and start cleaning yourself, which means you're doing the same job that they're supposed to be doing. Now, so I, I'm using that because even the lowest, what some people regard as the lowest form of, mm -hmm. of work, the dirtiest, I should say, the dirtiest, not necessarily lowest, the dirtiest. Oh, because I also found out, irreputable. yeah, exactly, irreputable. Yeah, so th that dirtiest or irreputable work influences everything. And I also found out that those, well, in, again, in the school, that uh, seminar I was in, uh, I found out that those guys, the amount of money those guys make, um, you, you'd be surprised. They make a lot of money. It's like the truckers, right? Mm. Uh, well, at least for that school, that particular school. So anyway, uh, it's just to reinforce the point that even the dirtiest worker is very essential in, 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 in you know, keeping the meal running, right? Okay, so let me let me just uh, go back to tying the other thing. What we're talking about the individual abilities with the you know the commission, uh, whatever way you look at the the grand scheme, the purpose of God. So uh, I actually want to expand on what I was talking about the fivefold ministry. So you have this call, this specific call of these five groups of people, this uh, five groups. They are very, it's very intentional by God to call these groups of people. Again, remember the, the purpose of it, what? For the reunification of the body, for edification, right? Um, I actually want to read it, um, uh, just to read it quickly because it's very important. So, um, so Ephesians chapter four, and that's for, uh, from verse, uh, from verse uh, 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Equip the saints for the work of ministry. Then he goes to say for the edifying of the body of Christ. So equip the saints for the work of ministry. People keep, people say, okay, ministry is just, hey, you know, church is confining to church again. Mm -hmm. Just being a parent is a ministry. Being a teacher is a ministry. Being a CEO is a ministry. Being a janitorial staff is a ministry. Once we as uh, people of faith in Christ, people, I really want to say sons of God or disciples of God, whoever it is, that identifies himself with Christ has, has to know that wherever you are, whatever you have been in, put in charge of, it is a ministry to you. It, you don't have to have the largest church in the Western Hemisphere. You just have to know that wherever you are is a ministry. You're crunching those numbers for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. That is a ministry. You have been called to that, right? Now, Again, there's people that are doing things they're not supposed to do. That's a different conversation right now. Um, we talk about purpose, identifying your purpose, identifying your calling, your giftings, and all that stuff. Once you are able to really identify that whatever you have been put in charge of is ministry, then it changes your worldview. And especially when you tie that to, yes, God has this specific agenda for the whole world, right? So anyway, equipping the sense for the work of ministry. Uh, a define of the body of Christ, define building, you know, uh, nurturing, uh, reinforcing. Now it says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. So all this is supposed to work so that we will come to oneness. 
And it doesn't stop there. It says, the knowledge of the Son of God. And then he goes on to say, to the perfect man, the perfect man. Now, this is the next thing we are picking up here. God is calling us to perfection. He's calling us to be reconciled to him because what did he say? Let us make man in what? Our image, our likeness. Let us, let us make image bearers. God is perfect. He's calling us to what? Perfection. So all this work is to bring us to the perfection, to the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so what that means is the measure of this, meaning Christ is the yardstick. He is the is, is how you measure things. It's a reference frame. Anything that we are doing right now in the name of church, if it doesn't measure up to Christ, in fact, anything that we should we are doing, we should measure it, it with Christ. Measure it with Christ. It, it, there's no other message I would listen to that doesn't emphasize that we have to we have to me measure ourselves to Christ. Any other thing is self-aggrandizement. Right? Don't forget, you are equally important. That's why we are a kingdom of priests. We are all kings and priests serving God, right? So I just wanted to reinforce that idea. Thank you so much, um, Brother Mike, for Thank you very much. For your insights.